Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to um, have some very uh, simple problems uh, to consider uh, the basic properties and basic definitions actually of probabilities. It's just illustrative problems. They're very easy um, and uh, the purpose is basically to get acquainted with some very basic um, fundamental characteristics of probability and events and sample space etc. <clears throat> so <clears throat> what we will do is uh, we will do it in, in the form of very simple problems which uh, I present as everything else actually as part of the uh, advanced uh, uh, mathematics course on unizor.com uh, and um, I do suggest you actually to go to the website this one and uh, uh, try to consider problems just yourself first because it, they're really very very simple uh, it's the definitions of probability problems number three and uh, and I will consider it right now uh, and let me just start from the probably the simplest one let's consider you have a certain sample space which contains certain elementary events and out from these elementary events we have composed two different events x and y now what um, I'm making next is an event which is the union of these um, it's or basically so the condition is event X or event Y happens now this event has a probability and I would like to prove that this probability is less than or equal to some of their probabilities actually if you remember um, the previous lecture which was about um, event arithmetic um, contained the material when this was actually exact equality that's in the case when uh, these events X and Y are mutually exclusive so a certain number of elementary events went into X and certain other elementary events completely different ones went to event Y in which case the measure of the OR between them actually includes all the elements of here plus all the elements of, of there and there are no common elements and since then uh, s since there was no common elements there was an equality because the measure of their s uh, of their um, union was equal to the sum of the, their measures but in general case this is less than or equal now why again if you remember in this previous lecture I actually presented the following formula so you have to subtract the common elements which if I'm counting these elements and these elements then the common elements I'm counting twice and that's why I have to subtract it once so intersection between X and Y is basically the common elements and since I have added them into this and into that I have to subtract this to get the real measure now this is the probability its measure it's always non-negative which means that if I will not use this I will have a greater uh, I will have a great greater value so P of X plus P of Y together are greater than P of X plus P of Y minus something right because this something is either zero or positive it's a measure it's a probability that's why we have this um, particular inequality now um, this is a simple problem as I was saying and it's basically a, a direct consequence from the material which I presented in the previous lecture about events arithmetic now another very simple consequence of the same material is the following if you take any event A and uh, event which is not A I will put 
um, the vertical bar uh, above A. That means it's not A. So the sum of their probabilities is equal to 1 always. Why? Well, for a very simple reason. The sum, the, the, if, if this is the sample space and this is certain event A, it has certain elementary events, right? Event not A includes all elements outside of this, right? So if I will add the measure of this plus measure of all outside, and they obviously are mutually exclusive, so that's why we have the following equality. Since they are mutually exclusive, A and not A obviously don't have any common elements. So the sum of their probability is the probability of their union. And what is their union? Well, this is the probability of entire sample space, which I call omega, entire sample space. And this is, by definition, equals to 1. OK, another simple thing. As I was saying, these are just illustrative examples of the material which I have presented in the previous lectures. Uh, now, another one. X and Y are two events. Now, what's known about them is the following. Probability of their intersection is equal to the probability of their union. That's kind of an unu unusual formula, right? Now, if you have picture so this is one event x and this is event y so this is their intersection and this is their union and I'm saying that the measure of these are the same now what does it mean well it means that, that x and y are almost the same because if x and y is exactly the same thing as you see their intersection is the same thing and their union is the same thing and that's why they are actually identical so, I have to prove that from this follows that x is equal to y, but I will put the p on the top. Now, p, is, p stands for probability. Now, what it means is that they are almost the same. And if they are not the same, if there are certain elements, elementary uh, events, which are in this, but not in that, or in that but not in this, these elementary events have measure of zero. By the way, it's not, um, uh, it's not some kind of a rule that all elementary events inside the space, inside the, uh, inside the, the sample space, have to have the same measure equal to basically one over a number of elements. Well, this is how we are conducting certain experiments which we call random. Well, but there are some cases, for instance, let me ask you the following question. What's the probability of rolling a dice and getting an event uh, 7? Well, we know that there are only six numbers which can, which can be the result of the rolling of the dice, right? So what's the probability of event that the number is equal to 7? Well, zero. There is zero probability. So if I will establish a new sample space, the numbers from 1 to 10, which can happen as a result of rolling a dice. Then numbers from 1 to 6 will get the probability of 1, 6, but numbers 7, 8, 9, and 10 will get the probability of 0. So there is nothing wrong with having a sample space greater than the number of uh, uh, practically occurring situations. So this is exactly the case. So if they are not equal, then it means that they are different only by those elementary events which have the probability of zero. That's what it means. So anyway, I have to prove it somehow. So, how can I prove it? Well, let's just start with something which we know, let's say. Uh, P of x and y, e uh, sorry, or y, is equal to P of x plus P of y minus P of their intersection. Right? 
Now, I know on the other hand that um, the union has the same probability as intersection. So this is the same as P of X, Y. So what do we have here now? Well, P of this intersection is equal to this. So 2 P of X intersection Y is equal to P of X plus P of Y. Now, let's just think about it. Well, instead of having 2, I will have P of F X plus Y of X and Y plus. The same thing, right? Now, let's just think about this event is definitely smaller as far as the number of um, elementary events which compose it than this one, right? This is X. And this is x, which is intersected with y, which is obviously less than x. It's only those elements of x, which are also elements of y. And this is only those elements of x. So I know that p of x is definitely greater than or equal to p of x and y, right? Because this is number of elementary events is equal or smaller and equality is only if they are if x and x and y are the same so the difference between x and x y and x and y is equal to, 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 to zero by probability right so only those elements from x which do not also belong to y are here and not there and if I want an equality, I have to have these elements which are from X but not from Y. They are supposed to be, uh, to have the probability of zero. Now, same thing, uh, same thing here. Probability of Y, again, is greater than probability of X and Y. This is greater than this. So this is greater or equal to this, and this is greater or equal to this. So the whole thing is greater than or equal, and the only equality can be achieved if, in both cases, elements of X which are not in their intersection are um, having the probability of zero, and elements of Y which, is, which are not in, uh, in common with X uh, supposed to have uh, the measurement of, uh, of zero, the probability of zero. So basically we have that the whole probability is concentrated in their common place, this is x and y. And whatever is outside of this common place, but in x, let's say this is x, and this is y. So these are supposed to be, to have the probability of zero, and these are supposed to be have, have a probability of zero. Only in this case, we will have equality here, and equality here, and equality here. That's the only way. So that's how we basically came up with this idea that if there is a difference between x and x and y, so if there are any elements of x which are not common with y, they have to have the probability of zero. And if there are any, any elements of y which are not common with x, they also should have the probability of zero. That's what I meant, that x and y are almost identical. They are identical with certain precision of elements which are not uh, measured to any significant probability, which has the probability, have the probability of zero. Okay. By the way, this is an important, um, an important consideration. You do, you do have in certain cases elements of probability zero. I was just giving you an example of rolling a dice, but having the numbers from one to ten as possible events, but only from one to six have a real probability associated with them equal to 1, 6 each and numbers from 7 to 10 have the probability of 0 associated. It's impossible event, right? So these events, X and Y, are identical to the precision of impossibility, if I can say so. Okay, um, then I would like to have a like exercise about what's elementary events, what's events, and what's an operation with events. 
um, the, the, the simplest possible experiment which I can conduct is um, flip the coins, flip coins, uh, two times, flip a coin two times. So first of all, I would like to uh, to characterize the elementary events. What are elementary events if I'm flipping uh, two coins? Well, obviously, it can be head head, it can be head tails, can be tail head, or tail tail. So I have four different outcomes if I'm flipping two coins, or one coin two times, doesn't matter. Now, obviously, if, the, if, if it's the uh, symmetrical coin, uh, I have four equally probable outcomes of this experiment. And by the way, one coin is completely independent from another, that's why I can assign absolutely um, equal probabilities to all of them. And obviously these probabilities are one quarter each. Now, next. Next, I would like to characterize in this language the certain events and their probability. Now, event number one says no tails. Now, what elementary events are um, in, in this uh, event E1, which is no tails? Well, this, this, and this, they're all having tails. So the only one event which, is, which has no tails is this one. It's only HH. Only one event and the probability is equal to one-fourth. Next. Only one head. Only one head. Okay. Only one head means this is not good, this is good, and this is good. This has two, and this has zero heads. So only these two. So E2 is equal to HT and TH. These two elementary events constitute an event E2 which is only one head happens. And the probability is one quarter plus one quarter which is one half. Right? Probability of any event is a sum of the probabilities of <coughs> elementary events which are included. E3. Uh, okay. Number of heads not equal to number of tails. Okay. Well, number of heads is 2, number of tails is 0. So this is good event, right? Now here it's one and one. They are equal, which is not good. Also one and one. And this is again zero heads and two tails. That corresponds to this condition. So these two events correspond to the two elementary events um, are together composing an event E3 and the probability is one quarter plus one quarter, which is one half. And the fourth event, which I'm considering, is number of heads equal to number of tails. Now, obviously, these are HT and TH. And the probability is also one half. So these are four events which I am considering right now. Next. Next is what's the E1 
or E2. Now, you remember that whenever we are talking about OR condition, it means that all elementary events which are either in this one or in that one are supposed to be included, right? So, this is, in this one is HH, and, uh, and E2 is HT, comma, TH. That's the event which is E1 or E2, which means either no tails or only one head. These events which I'm interested in. And the probability is obviously equal to one uh, three quarters, right? Next, E3 or E4. E3 or E4? E3, E4. So it's basically HH, TT, HT, and TH. And this is, the probability is equal to 1, because these are all the elementary events which are, in theory, possible. All four of them. By the way, E3 and E4 can be characterized uh, in, in a different way. Basically, E3 is a negation of E4, or E4 is a negation of E3, e e because they're complementing each other to a complete set. Next, E2 and E4. Now, and means we are talking about common elementary events, right? E2 and E4. This is E2, this is E4. And as you see, they are identical. So that's quite interesting. The event only one head is equivalent, is identical basically, to the event when the number of heads is equal to the number of uh, tails. So the probability of this, well, first of all, what, what's included uh, HT and TH, and the probability is one half, quarter plus quarter. Next is E3 and, no, e E1, sorry, E1 and E3. E1 is double H, E3 is HH and TT. HH is in common. So that's the only result of the end condition between E1 and E3. Common elements are only HH. So that's the result of this end condition and the probability is one-fourth. And the last couple of things. Not E2 the complement, the opposite to E2. Well, let's just think, what is opposite? If you have a total number of elementary events and E2 is these two elementary events, so what's left from the total, if you subtract these, would be the negation. So the result would be HH and TT, right? Out of four elementary events, if we are trying to complement these two events, that's what will be there, right? And the probability is obviously one half. And finally, not E4. E4 is this, so the opposite is the same thing, HH and TT. And that's not a coincidence because E2 and E4 are exactly the same. I just expressed these events differently. E2 means only one head. E4 uh, means number of heads and number of ta uh, tails are the same. But it's exactly the same event. The same elementary events are going into it. So the, the opposite to E4, the same as opposite to, to E2, is this set of two elementary events with a probability of one half. 
Well, these are all illustrative, very simple exercises uh, with elementary events for one particular case. I mean, there are millions of different um, examples which are in some way analogous to this one, which we can present if we have time anyway. So, what I suggest you to do right now is go to the website, go to the unisor.com, to this particular um, lecture. It's a num problem, problems number three among uh, the formal definition of probabilities and try to do it yourself again, just on a piece of paper, and see if, if you can do it. That would be a very good exercise. Uh, other than that, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.